I think that if you have fear, you're doing something right. Because I think the big things that we do and the most exciting things always have that a little bit of level of fear to them. So it kind of makes me think that if there's some fear there, then I'm on the right path. Welcome to Imagined Here, where you will hear stories of local creative talent. Let's get started with your host, Andy Crowner. This episode, we sit down with Kristen Vaughn from Hillside Studio in Ely, Iowa. Kristen makes some really unique handmade jewelry, primarily earrings. Today, she'll talk all about her monthly stud club, her take on using Etsy to get started, being featured on a Joanne Fabric video during a retreat, building her own makers community, and really why you should jump in and start to create right now. Hey, before we get started with this episode, please just take two seconds and like, share, and please subscribe to this podcast. Imagined Here is available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and TuneIn Podcasts. Like always, all of the show notes will be available on imaginedhere.com, so you can just bounce over there and type in Kristen or Hillside Studio, and everything we talk about today will be right there in the show notes. Here is the episode with Kristen Vaughn. All right, let's welcome to Imagine Here, Kristen Vaughn from Hillside Studio in Eli, Iowa, which is located between Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. Kristen, welcome to Imagine Here. Thank you. Super happy to be here. Kristen, just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you create, and give us a little glimpse into your personal life. Yeah, so um, like you said, my name is Kristen, um, and I live in, actually, it's pronounced Ely, Iowa, but that is a common mistake. Um, I live in Ely with my husband and our three kiddos um, who are 13, 10, and 9, um, and they keep us very, very busy, Um, lots of sports and such. And I own a business called Hillside Studio. Um, and I make um, primarily handmade jewelry. I kind of dabble into a few other things too, um, some t-shirts and mugs and some hand lettered items, um, but primarily known for the jewelry side of things. So I actually just do that um, on the side for now. Um, and I'm also, I work full time for a medical supply company as an executive assistant. So very busy lives um, that we have, um, but the um, Hillside Studio things are sort of my passion. I've always kind of been a creative person, um, and so that's where I like to um, put that energy to. So give us a little idea of exactly what kind of jewelry you create. So um, I have a very colorful, sparkly vibe um, going on. A lot of my work is with resin, and it's a jewelry grade resin that I put different colors into and glitter. Um, I make different earrings primarily with that. And then I also do a lot of work with polymer clay. Um, so I make a lot of handmade beads and some fun big earrings. I'd say earrings are primarily um, my focus, kind of what I've known, what I'm known for. Sometimes when people see me, they'll say, hey, you're the sparkly earring girl. And so... I guess that's primarily what I do. I liked reading through your website, seeing that you didn't necessarily see it as what you created was just jewelry, but what you were really trying to do was bring a little happiness and fun to people. Yeah. I mean, I am a very colorful, lively person. And so I sort of reflect that outwardly with the jewelry and the clothing that I wear. And so I love to give a little piece of that to other people so that they can feel pretty and feel fun and just get compliments because somebody noticed the sparkly earrings or the bright colors. So um, I just think that it can really brighten your mood and brighten your day, A, when you're wearing something fun like that, and B, when you see somebody else wearing something like that. So I like to add um, a little sparkle and a little color to people's days that way. So Kristen, take us to the, the actual day that you decided and started to sell your very first piece of jewelry and tell us that story of uh, the very, very beginning. So I, I've, like I said, I've always been a creative person and I, had been through a divorce and I was 
kind of just making some crafts and doing things like that to kind of keep myself occupied while I didn't have my kids with me because that was a really difficult time. Um, and so I would just make stuff and try to keep my, my mind busy on that. And then I had a friend who was sewing some purses and bags and stuff and decided to open an Etsy shop. And I thought, hey, I could do that. I have all this jewelry and I can't even wear it all and making so much of it. So I just decided to put some online and try to sell it. And I was actually shocked that people wanted to buy it. So uh, it kind of started almost by accident. And I thought, oh, well, this would be fun to, to do and maybe somebody would want it. And they did. And then kind of the rest is history. It, it took off pretty quickly for me. And I, like I said, I, I just do it part-time right now. Um, but it is a pretty successful side business for me. And um, I just really love doing it. I saw that the Etsy store has quite a big business with over a thousand sales and of course, five-star reviews. So that's, that's great. looks like you're doing really good there. Yeah. I actually don't even sell on Etsy anymore. I um, decided that I was doing enough in volume that it didn't make sense for me to keep paying the Etsy fees. So I started my own website, um, which is where I do most of my sales um, now. I also do markets um, and things like that and looking to get um, branch out into wholesale here in the near future. Um, but I really credit Etsy for helping give me that start um, because it's a really easy way for people to who are new to it or just trying to dip their toe in the water to be able to easily put their things online and, and have people see them, whether they are moving people there themselves or whether they are organically getting traffic through Etsy search. So I think Etsy is a, is a really great tool for people just starting out. We all kind of have that fear of just starting and actually showing our work for the first time and putting it up for sale. Tell us a little bit about that, the fear that you had to conquer and how you overcame it. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think that my fear was super great. I can be kind of a fearless person in, in some ways. And so I have gotten some advice in the past that it's like, you just have to start and you have to start somewhere and everybody starts somewhere. So just put it out there and see what happens. Um, and so I just kind of like took that mentality that like, there was no skin off my back other than a 20 cent Etsy listing fee if nobody wanted to buy it. So, of course, I think probably if nobody had bought it, my feelings may have been a little hurt. But, <laughs> but I just kind of jumped in fearlessly to it. Um, not saying I do that with everything, of course, but in this instance, I think I started small enough that um, I didn't have a great fear kind of moving into doing bigger things, I maybe had more fear. Um, but again, I just kind of put that to the side and just jumped in. I think that if you have fear, you're doing something right. Because I think the big things that we do and the most exciting things always have that a little bit of level of fear to them. So it kind of makes me think that if there's some fear there, then I'm on the right path. You know, this is a great time to reach out right now and start selling your crafts, especially when the cost of entry is so low, when you can jump on an Etsy for basically for free or uh, build a web page for basically nothing now. And, and same thing with this podcast. It really didn't cost me anything to really get going. Um, so it's a, a great time in life to really step out and, and just start creating. So tell me, what's some of the best advice you've ever been given? Um, I think going back to a little bit of what I just said, that if there is some fear there, then you're probably on the right path um, because the big, exciting things are scary. And so um, to just kind of kind of bust through that a little bit. And, and like I said, also just start. I posted something on my Instagram today about um, it was a picture of my first market booth and, um, and then a picture of, of my market booth from this past weekend. And like the difference was <laughs> incredible. And it was almost like, well, just bless those people who bought from me when I first started selling, <laughs> because, um, it was crazy to see the difference in the last four years. And, but I think that 
if I hadn't have started, then I would still be where I was four years ago. So um, you just have to jump in and you just have to do it. And, and I also think that um, you can be like a big inspiration for other people and not even know it. Like my friend who just decided to start selling her purses. If I hadn't have seen, seen her do that, I probably wouldn't have done it myself, at least not at that point. Um, so I think that not only do you owe it to yourself, but just to think about who else you can inspire to do the same things. Because in this fast paced world that we live in right now, it's so great to see the artisans and the craftspeople and to see the things that people can make with their own ha hands. Like it, it never ceases to amaze me. And I just think that the world needs more of it. And I say, go for it. I saw you post that picture today and it obviously is a big difference between where you were four years ago and today. And I hope everybody will jump onto your Instagram page and check that out. We'll have a link to that on imaginehere.com and they can just type Kristen or Hillside Studio into the search bar and they can click on over to your Instagram and see see that photo. And I think part of what that says is, you know, it does, things don't have to be perfect just to start and start selling and getting out there and creating what you want to create. Exactly. I mean, things are never going to be perfect. So if you're waiting for them to be perfect, you're going to be waiting forever. So you might as well start now, get the experience, get some more time under your belt and things will just progress and move forward. But you got to start somewhere. So you might as well start now. So tell us one time when the stars did not align. Give us one real story. Take us there to that day when maybe you kind of had a a failure moment and we all learn from those, but take us and uh, tell us that story. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily see things as failures um, because I just like to look at them as, as opportunities to learn and grow. And, but I mean, I've definitely had some experiences that I learned a lot from. <laughs> um, and a lot of them just have to do with just trial and error and, and trying to figure things out. Um, I mean, I tried to launch, I not tried, I did launch a line of kind of hand Leonard goods, um, a few months ago. Um, and it was kind of my first dabbling into hand lettering and I practiced and practiced and practiced for years, but it was kind of the first time of me putting it out there for people to see. Um, and so I had some stationery and t-shirts and, mugs and glasses and a few things that I mean I was super proud of and I was so excited to release them and start selling these things that I had created and honestly it kind of flopped <laughs> not a whole lot of people bought the stuff and in fact when I launched it on my website it was crickets I did not get one single sale that first day and it kind of I don't know it just like at first, I, my feelings were hurt, and I was like, oh, no, this stinks. You know, nobody likes it. But when I really stepped back and looked at it, I realized everything was was very rushed, and I was just very excited to get this stuff out there. And I didn't, I don't know, I don't think I put all the time and effort to make things um, exactly my style and exactly how I would have been super happy with them to be. And um, I'm also known for jewelry. So I think throwing this other stuff out at people, um, maybe they weren't ready for it or, or it's something like that. But I kind of stepped back and, and learned a lot about the process that I went through and learned a lot about the quality of items that I wanted to put my name on. Um, and so just reflecting on that was a big learning process for me and um, not trying to take it so personal, I guess, when somebody didn't want to buy the things that I had created. So I think I'm still learning a bit from that process and I'll continue to learn from that. Um, but yeah, I'd say that was one of my bigger learning lessons of recent. I saw the hand littered items on your website and actually thought, uh, I need to go back here in a month or two when I'm ordering Christmas gifts because they look like some great ideas for my family. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, some of the stuff I don't have up anymore and I've left the ones that were maybe a little more popular and a little bit more of my favorite items. And those are things that I think truly ref reflect me and, and my, I guess, 
style and the quality of things that I want to put out. Well, let's switch modes a little bit and tell us a story of kind of an I made it moment where you knew, you know what, this is really taking off and I'm really being successful uh, creating this jewelry and people really like it. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe after I was a couple years in, I just, maybe it was about about October, I have just like my sales were just increasing dramatically and I had a couple of holiday shows and like had really great sales from it. And, um, I was able to pay for every single Christmas present that Christmas in cash. And it was just kind of a good feeling to, to not have to worry about paying down those credit cards after the first of the year. And, um, and it was the first kind of glimpse I had, I think into like, maybe I can do this. Maybe I, maybe I can do this full time and, and maybe this can actually be something other than this little hobby. And, you know, it's just kind of still grown from there, which I'm super excited about the future. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I don't always like to judge everything monetarily, but, but it is a big factor and, and it does show your reach, I guess. Um, and so that was kind of the first time where I was like, Hey, this is actually something I have here. So tell us what kind of projects you're working on right now or some new things coming out. So I'm trying to, um, get my line sheet and catalog together so I can really start pushing wholesale, um, and get into some brick and mortar shops. And then I'm also working on launching, um, a passion project of mine, um, which is called the maker squad. Um, and it's going to be a community for makers and creatives, um, to sort of share your tips and tricks and your trials and tribulations and bond and that sort of thing. Um, I've been to a couple of retreats in the last few years, um, for female creatives. And I think there's something really magical about getting together with like-minded people in person, um, and having those amazing bonding experiences and networking and figuring out like who can help you with things. And yeah, I'm just, being with like-minded people and throwing ideas off of other people and being able to share your struggles and your triumphs with people who understand, um, because oftentimes our close friends and family members don't understand the creative process and about owning a, a small business. And so I'm looking forward to getting that launched here in the near future. I saw the video you were featured on from the Joanne Fabric and Craft Stores, or it looked like you went to something similar that they promoted. Yeah. So it actually started, um, there was like 17 of us makers that all just kind of knew each other from Instagram. Um, we had never met in person, um, and we just decided to plan a retreat and we went, got together at this house in Kansas that's called the whatever craft house. Um, and we spent a weekend together there and somehow somewhere along the line, Joanne craft stores got wind of it and they were doing a video series called handmade heroes. Um, and they decided to film us that weekend. And so, um, they did a little short video on our weekend there and about, about, the magic of getting together with like-minded people. So um, it was a really amazing experience and it's kind of the, what started um, my passion for um, community. So what other types of things and goals do you have for the future of Hillside Studio? You know, I'm not sure exactly where I will be, but um, I would love to expand the wholesale wholesale side of things. And I'd like to in the next year or so be in, you know, 20 or so shops. And I'd like to um, hold a retreat for um, makers um, in, the, in the near future too. So those are a couple big things and dreams that I have working up. One interesting thing I saw was the subscription squad that you have on your website. Can you tell me a little bit about that? 
Yeah. So I think a lot of things are working towards subscriptions nowadays. So I thought I would try my hand at an earring subscription. Um, My stud earrings are by far my most popular item. And so I started there um, and started a subscription about, well, it's been almost two years now, which is kind of crazy. So it is called the Stud Squad, um, and I've got quite a few girls that are in that, and you just get a handmade pair of studs every month. Um, they're always brand new. You can only get them if you're on the Stud Squad. Um, and then probably about a year after I launched that, I launched the Bold Squad, which is um, an earring subscription for people who like a little bit bigger, fun, bold earrings. So I really love that sometimes when I'm just cranking out orders and just making the same things over and over and over again, I can get a little bored. It can be a little tedious. And so the stud squad is a great opportunity for me to be creative and come up with something brand new at least once a month. Um, So I really enjoy the process of creating that. And um, I really love that all the girls who are in stud squad just love their earrings every month and you just get a little fun surprise in the mail. And so it was a really fun thing that I was so happy that I started. And I've had girls that have been in it since the very beginning. And so I've been reaching out to some of those lately and um, they've been able to help me design the stud squad month. So that's been a fun process too, is getting to know my customers a little better through that. I think that's such a fun idea. I know out of the the first couple of interviews I've had here already, there's a couple of different people that could probably take that same idea into some different areas. So that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty great idea you've got going there. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's been so much more than I thought it would be. Originally, it was like, I would just like to have some sort of recurring income, but it's turned into so much more than that. So um, I'm super happy with it. And I think um, there's no end in sight for that. So tell me, Kristen, uh, who has influenced your work and where do you find ideas for your next pieces? I just love color um, and I love fun shapes and, and just like happy, cheerful things. And so, um, I kind of joke that on my business card, I'm a glitter enthusiast and laugh instigator and champion of color. So I just, I like things that make me happy when I look at them. I'm very much in the sense of like how a little girl is happy when there's unicorns and sparkles everywhere. I joke a lot of times at craft shows because I say I disappoint a lot of little girls because they run straight to my booth and then they realize that they probably can't wear anything that's in there because it's all too big for them or whatever. Um, But I just, I get a lot of inspiration just from looking at colorful color palettes on Instagram or um, just going outside in nature. Um, I'm never cease to be amazed at the wondrous colors that, you know, the earth provides to us through gemstones and um, the changing colors in the landscapes and flowers and all that sort of thing. So nature is also a big inspiration for me. Kristen, do you have a book that you would recommend to our listeners, something you've maybe read recently or a book you'd like to give to others to read? I don't necessarily have a specific book. Um, I really love, I'm kind of into self-help and spiritual books. Um, So anything Brene Brown I love or um, Gabby Bernstein. But yeah, those two authors, I would recommend anything written by them. Have you seen Brene Brown's new Netflix special? I have, and I really loved it. Yeah, that was a very powerful speech. It made me go back. I had actually not heard of Brene before that. And so I went back and, and uh, watched her TED Talk and read some of her books. And yeah, what an inspirational person. Yeah, I mean, I think that she has a lot of valuable information. Um, one of the greatest things I took from her, which I think this may have been in one of her books too, but from her Netflix special was, you know, the I, the story I'm telling myself is... Um, so like when you're, it's just kind of funny to think about all the things that are going on in your head are probably just in your head (laughs) and it's important to not insert the way you're interpreting things as 
the absolute truth that someone else is thinking. That's the exact same main point I took from that uh, Netflix special. And I know I've used that just in communication several times when I've had to have a hard discussion with someone and I've just actually said that. The, the story I'm telling myself is this so they could understand what was going on in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a super valuable communication tool and super important to think about when you're maybe not seeing eye to eye with somebody. Imagine to your listeners, we know that you like audiobooks, so we've teamed up with Audible to bring you a special offer. Visit imaginehere.com slash audible for a free 30-day Audible trial and two free audiobooks. You can cancel at any time, and you get to keep your audiobooks forever. So go on over to imaginehere.com slash audible, and you can get your free 30 days and two audiobooks right now. All right, Kristen, what uh, what are some of your favorite events that you've set up a booth at and sold somewhere? They don't have to be too local. They can be a little far away, but that's part of the great part of having a local podcast is people can go to these events. What's some of your favorite places to set up at? Sure. Um, so my number one favorite is um, the Corridor Market, which is in... I think it's technically in Tiffin, but the Coralville area. Um, and it is a, it's an awesome event. There's always food trucks and a bar and coffee and like tons of amazing vendors. Um, and, um, it's just one of my favorite events to do. I also really love vintage and made fair, which is in Des Moines. And that's a great event as well. Um, it's funny because I used to, really not like doing events because they are a lot of work to get all of that product ready to go. And then sometimes you're at the mercy of weather or what have you. And sometimes they don't go super awesome and sometimes they are. So it's always sort of like an emotional roller coaster. But then I just decided to kind of change my outlook on them and just go and have fun and connect with people and meet my customers in person. Cause a lot of times, um, I, I know people from Instagram and maybe we chat back and forth there or they, you know, I have certain people that buy a lot of my stuff. And sometimes it, when I get to meet them in person, um, it's really great to have that connection, um, that face-to-face -face connection with people. Um, it's always great catching up with all of my maker friends as well um, at the shows. And so um, I say those are two of my favorite ones. So there'll be some amount of people listening to this that are interested in making their own jewelry or other handmade items. And do you have any kind of tools of the trade, some of your best gear that you'd recommend to someone that's interested in making for themselves? So probably my number one thing I use is my grandma's old pasta machine, um, which is funny because people are like, you do what? Um, but my, the clay that I use um, for a lot of my jewelry, sometimes it has to be conditioned or I mix my own custom colors and a pasta machine is actually the best way to do that. So you can just roll it through there and get it mixed up or roll it flat or that sort of thing. And so obviously you can't find my grandma's old pasta machine, but they do still sell the same machine. Um, and so you can get it on Amazon or lots of different kitchen stores or whatever. But that's my favorite tool, especially because it was my grandma's. And then my favorite kind of clay that I use is the um, Primo clay. And you can find that at lots of arts and crafts stores or Amazon or anything like that. Um, and then the type of resin that I use, that's my favorite resin. And I know people who use resin all have different, different favorites, but mine is ice resin and you can get that lots of different places too. Um, and resin is kind of a finicky beast because sometimes for no apparent reason, it will just not turn out. Um, but I've always had the best luck with ice resin. We'll have links on the imaginehere.com website to all the things you just talked about, as well as links over to your website and Instagram. And so they can go there and just type Kristen or Hillside Studio in the search bar and see the show notes. So take a few minutes. Uh, tell us, go a little in depth with this. If you started over today, a couple years down the road with all the knowledge that you have now, 
uh, how would you start over today if if uh, someone else was interested in getting into this and starting to make for themselves? Yeah, I mean, I I think I would try to not do so many different things. I think the first couple of years that I was going, I was trying to do everything for everybody. Um, I it's crazy the amount of suggestions I get from friends and family and strangers alike. Um, oh, you should make this, or can you make me this, or all these other ideas, these amazing ideas that other people have, and I would just do them trying to please everybody, um, and sometimes it's easy to get lost um, in all of that stuff and kind of lose yourself and your point of view, and I would try not to do so much of that. I think I quickly found my way back when I realized that I wasn't happy making all of that stuff. Or sometimes it was like so time consuming trying to learn how to do something that you're not used to doing because somebody else wants it. So um, I, I would say no more to people and lead them in a way of finding somebody that does do that sort of thing. Um, because I think there's something to say for having a specialty or um, having a niche of something that you do instead of trying to do it all. I would not hustle as much as I did those first couple of years. Um, and I would really try to work a little smarter and not so hard because I did a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of late nights. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are still late nights and there's still a lot of, of work that I do. Um, but I don't hustle anymore. And I try to enjoy what I'm doing because that's why I started it. And if it's not fun anymore, I don't want to do it anymore. So um, I just try to keep that in the back of my mind that like, I want this to be fun and, and enjoyable and bring joy to myself and others. And if it's not bringing me joy to make, then I don't want to put it out there because I think that um, my pieces like are full of love and, and I like putting that out into the world, um, in a joyful way. And so just sticking, sticking to myself, um, is always a good, a good reminder. And yeah, I would just say, be true to yourself and go for it. You at one point moved away from Etsy and towards your own website. Would you recommend to someone just starting that they should still start at Etsy or go their own way right off the bat? You know, I mean, I think it it depends on each individual situation. I think Etsy is an amazing tool and I really have nothing but good things to say about Etsy. It's a great, easy way to get your items online to sell. Um, if you're going to go big right away, um, maybe it, it might be good to start with your own website because I know that I had everything on Etsy and then I basically had to recreate everything on my website. So I kind of had to do everything twice. It was a good jump to make. And I actually did both Etsy and a website um, for a time, but it was a little bit too much to keep up with. So I decided to just go with my own website. But yeah, I mean, I think I think it's an an individual call depending on on where you where you want your business to move. Well, thanks, Kristen, again for taking time to be with us here today. And again, listeners can head over to imaginehere.com and type Kristen or Hillside Studio in the search bar, and they'll see the show notes page, which will show all the information we talked about today, as well as. Uh, Kristen's Instagram and, and webpage where you can go actually see this work. So Kristen, why don't you just leave us with kind of a parting piece of guidance and tell fans how they can connect with you. Yeah. So I would say if you're thinking about doing something creative or putting your work out, out there, just do it. Just start now. Just make the leap, hold your breath, push post, put it on Instagram, put it on Etsy, whatever you're going to do, go to, go do a market. Um, not everybody has to start the same way and just do it. Just go for it. Um, if you're looking for inspiration or tips, I am always happy to help. So you can find me, um, everywhere 
at Shop Hillside Studio, Instagram, Facebook. My website is shophillsidestudio.com. Um, and then very soon, if not by the time this is out, um, I will have a site up at Maker Squad Official on Instagram and then makersquad.co online. So you can find me there. All right. Thanks again, Kristen. And we'll talk with you again very soon. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks for listening to this episode of Imagined Here. Take just a second and please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>